You're listening to A1R Psychic Radio, Earth's number one psychic radio network, and watching Moonstruck TV and Lightning Television. Welcome. Time for Amanda Hall Psychic with Amanda Hall. Amanda Hall. Live from AmandaHallPsychic.com.au. Connect direct. In North America, dial 888-454-2751. In London, 203519-2158. In Sydney, dial 02-8488-3147. Or online, contact us through our Facebook page, facebook.com slash psychic radio. Websites. Ask1radio.com or moonstruck.tv. This is Amanda Hall Psych on A1R, the Ask One Radio Network. Welcome to A1R Psychic Radio here on Moonstruck TV with Amanda Hall Psychic all the way from the Gold Coast. I hope you've had an absolutely sensational week as I have. It's been, I don't know where the weeks go. The days just seem to fly by, don't they? I mean, here we are in October, nearly time for Halloween. The the, the time of the year where we can get in touch with our loved ones that they're closest to the earth, the, the veils are thinnest, and it's only weeks away now. And it's just so interesting, you know, we might be in very uncertain times with a worldwide pandemic still looming around us larger than life, but yet the days, the weeks still seem to be sort of flying by, or they do for me anyway. So I don't know about you, but that's how I'm sort of feeling. And so it's really interesting this week to have a Simply tarot card of the week that says that we're going to have some delays. Now, look, I think we've all been living with delays for such a long period of time now, on and off since the pandemic started, that we sort of feel like we've been in one big vacuum with that. And it's like it would be really, really nice to sort of think that these delays are leading to something or have led to something that will prove necessary in our lives. Now, look, we've spoken about it many times on the show before about what everybody's experiencing or gaining or subtracting from this pandemic. And one of the things that's become very painfully obvious to me from working with people from all around this amazing globe of ours is that everybody has taken stock. In some form or another, they've reorganised their lives, whether it's looking at the things that are most important to them now that may not necessarily have been at the top of the list before, and it's family and the people that we love are coming out at number one. It's interesting because it's coming out against, you know, it's beating things like finances, money, wanting a bigger house, a new car, taking that trip overseas or that special holiday or whatever. The main thing that people are telling me and sharing with me now is I just want to be able to spend quality time with my family and to be able to do that with no restrictions, to be able to make plans to have everybody around the Christmas table or for that special gathering, somebody's birthday, anniversary or whatever. So this card, I think, is still indicating we've got some delays around in our lives, but we all know that they will prove necessary. Now, before I kick into the astrology section, I do want to make an apology for me giving you some wrong information last week. I said Mercury was retrograde, which it was, and it was on its last days before it was going to go direct. Now, Mercury retrograde is the planet of communication, which I always share with people, everybody, be very careful of how you make sure you put your listening ears on and make sure that you're listening intently to what's being said because Mercury retrograde means that sometimes we get our communication wrong. Well, I'm one of those ones that got the communication wrong last week. What I meant to say was we were in the early days of the Mercury retrograde. Mercury would continue to go retrograde until the 18th of October. It only started on September 27. So I apologise. That's a real typical Mercury retrograde blunder. Now, Mercury retrograde is Mercury is the planet of communication. Now, it's the time when communication can be wrong or you misinterpret or you mishear or somebody makes a a statement that's incorrect and it's not deliberate, it's a slip of the tongue. It's the time when our computer systems can go down and yesterday was a classic example around the world with one of the major social media companies was unable for people were unable to log into their services for many, many hours. A lot of people find found that they had their accounts hacked and things like that, that people were sending out um, friend requests on your behalf and it wasn't you. So that's a typical Mercury retrograde. It's the time if your computer, your device, your phone, your iPhone, your whatever is going to play up, your tablet, it's the time that that will happen. It's also the time that you have to be very careful when you start sending parcels and things like that. If something's ever going to get lost in the post or in transit, it'll happen then. And it's interesting that there's a number of places around the world at the moment have got a halt on 
parcel delivery and let, letters being moved from one area to another because they just don't have the resources and the trucks and the people and the whatevers to to reinstate full normal service because of the backlog of things being sent during this pandemic. So that's a real typical Mercury retrograde situation. But more importantly, on a personal level, Mercury retrograde means that we have to be very careful of the conversations and communications we have with the people that are closest to us. Because quite often, they're a little bit preoccupied. They haven't got their listening ears on. They're only picking up little bits and pieces of the conversation you're trying to have with them. And then they react or overreact to what's being said because they haven't really absorbed the whole of the conversation. So this is not the time to go and ask your boss for a raise in salary because you might find that the answer you'll get won't be the one you're looking for. So can I suggest if you have any really serious financial matters to do, if you can at all at all leave them till around about the 21st of October or October 21 onwards, allowing a couple of days after the retrogrades finish to sort of gain momentum and start moving forward in full throttle, that would be my suggested course of action. For those of you that have to do transactions during this time, make sure that you read the contracts or the fine print very, very carefully. My suggested course of action would be take the document and read it out aloud. Quite often when we read something out aloud to ourselves instead of to ourselves, we find then that we pick up the mistakes or we realise that something's not worded correctly or something's wrong and that's always a good fallback in during these times when Mercury goes retrograde. So I hope that's clarified and, and everybody didn't do the happy dance thinking Mercury retrograde was over with and we could all sort of breathe a sigh of relief. It was at, at the very beginning of the three-week transit. So this week we have real emphasis on a lot of planetary configurations in Libra. We have the moon, which is the emotional planet that we know that only stays in a sign for a couple of days. So the moon at the moment is holding hands with the sun. It's that time of the year. It's the sun in Libra time of the year where Librians shine and it's their birthday month and so they should. So with the, the moon and the sun holding hands here, it's sort of almost like the male versus female energy holding hands in perfect unison at the moment. So, you know, for a, another day or so, we might find that things are very calm on the Western front, that we feel as if our life is very much in balance. For some people, it might be the time that you get to the bottom of some emotional issues that have been plaguing you and troubling you and you, and you get that light bulb moment that you find the solutions or the answers. The sun is also holding hands with Mars, the planet of action. Mars is the planet of action that gets us out of bed of a morning. It's where our ego, our drive comes from. But it also gives us the determination to be able to get out there and make things happen with our lives. Now, we have to be aware at the moment, yes, Mars is conjunct or holding hands with the sun. So we do have that, you know, if we want to look at it in a train succession, we've got the emotions pushing forward first, leading on to what makes us happy, what makes us smile in our lives, and then the ego or the, the drive to make it happen. But we also have to be aware that Mars is holding hands or conjunct with Mercury retrograde that I just spoke about a few moments ago. So there's going to be some miscommunication. There's going to be maybe people not really listening or thinking that you're being a little bit self-centred when what you're doing is asking questions, trying to find the balance, trying to find that you're looking at the situation or situations at hand from every angle, looking at it from everybody's point of view, not just your own. And some people might misinterpret that as you're trying to delay the inevitable or wasting time or asking silly questions, things that they think have already been answered. Look, whatever the case may be, just sort of say, look, let's just calm down. Let's look at this very carefully. Let's sort of, let's consider everybody's needs here, not just yours, not just mine, but there's two other people in the room. Let's consider everybody. And I think if we can try and approach it in that way, we can all gain the maximum out of this intense energy sitting in Libra at the moment. Now, the Libra energy, a lot of people look at Libra and think, oh, yeah, it's just the scales that can't bring themselves into balance. The Librian energy is actually quite powerful. And some of the most powerful leaders in the world have been born under the sign of Libra. Now, Margaret Thatcher was one of those. You know, a lot of people said she ruled with an iron fist and she probably did. 
and people sort of thought that she, you know, she made a decision and that was it. But the, what they failed to realise was she gave it careful consideration. She weighed it up very, very carefully before she said, right, that's it. That's what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do leading the country forward. And she had to make decisions that, you know, other people thought were unpalatable. But to her way of looking at things and her truth, it was the only way that she could deliver the results for the whole country. And if that meant we all had to bite the bullet and take a bit of pain, well, that's what we had to do to get us where we needed to go. A lot of high court judges are born under the sign of Libra where they have that ability to be able to weigh up all the information that's given to them very clearly and sometimes not so clearly and people trying to be deceptive and lie and whatever and tell them what they think the judge wants to hear. But the judge is able to sift through that and find the truth in the whole situation and then bring down their findings. So next time you're dealing with a Libra, don't just brush them off as being not able to make a decision. Look at them in a different way, that they're weighing up all the options, they're weighing up all the information before they make a final decision on where things are going. So finally, in the astrology section, I want to talk about Uranus, the planet of the unusual and unexpected. Now, Uranus has been sitting in Taurus now for a couple of years and will be there for a while, longer yet. Uranus usually spends about seven to ten years in one sign. Now, Uranus's role is a little bit like the Tower card in the Tarot. It's sudden, deliberate, definite. It's like a bolt of lightning striking the ground and sort of sometimes that creates havoc and damage and other times it doesn't do anything except just that it's been a pretty light show. So with Uranus sitting in a sign like that, and Taurus governs things that are important to us, the things that we value, whether that's money, whether that's our morals, it's the way that we look at things, it sometimes can make us a little bit stubborn and pig-headed, that our way is the only way, our our version of the truth is the only version of the truth because I said so. So we have to be a little bit careful with Uranus here, with Uranus trying to break up things and sort of show us that there's different ways of looking at things, that we don't have to be so fixed and so rigid, that sometimes he goes a little bit too much the other way because we dig our heels in and say, I'm not going to change or I'm not going to look at it from another angle. Uranus says, well, just watch me. I'll see how you like this. Bang, here comes the bolt of lightning. Let's split the ground in two. Now, which side would you like to stand on? You know, I'm going to sit here in the middle. I've divided the ground. So we have to be a little bit careful with that because Uranus his role is to sort of break up our thinking, is to ask us to think outside the square, to have those light bulb moments, to maybe find some solutions to a situation or a problem that has plagued us for a long time and it's like, bang, the, the answer comes, it comes out of nowhere. Why didn't I think of that before? Because that's exactly how Uranus works. Now, Uranus is making what's known as an uncomfortable um configuration in astrology we call them transits it's called an inconjunct now an inconjunct means that it doesn't feel comfortable with the energy that's transferring between the two planets now we've got uranus sitting in taurus which we've just spoken about now it's inconjunct or feeling very uncomfortable with mercury the planet of communication that's retrograde so it's sort of you know it, it's stirring things up it's asking us to look at things it's asking us to question things it's asking us to question our values and all those sort of things but at the same time it's bringing things up in a very, very uncomfortable way. The communication that's coming or being brought forward towards us may not necessarily be what we want to hear. It's not necessarily making us feel comfortable. We're squirming in our seats. Why do we have to deal with this now? Can't we put it off till next week? Can't we look at it in a different way? So it's interesting because a lot of governments around the world are going through some very difficult times at the moment where people are resigning out of thin air. Things are changing. Corruption's coming to the forefront people can't agree on sort of certain legislative bills that have got to pass in your your government system so it's sort of a very tricky sort of time because people are trying to hang on to what they think is important or what's their principles or what they've always voted on but all of a sudden there's an argument coming to think a completely different way and it's like it's really challenging them. And it's sort of like, well, hang on a minute. I don't want to be the first one to put my hand up and say I vote against this when we've always voted for it. So just be aware of that. The, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening in the political fronts around the world, but it can also be very political in your own home 
or in your own um, place of employment where people are sort of taking a stand or looking at things in a very different way. Again, my suggestion would be if you haven't got to have the conversation till after that October 21, then don't. You know, just sit on the sidelines, grab some popcorn and watch people sort of as they unfold and the dance and the sides that they go on. It could make it a lot clearer to you that people, where they're coming from, where their head's at, what their belief systems are and how things have changed or have they changed or are you just truly seeing them for who they truly are where before they've put on a mask, they've put on a front that said I'm one way but I'm really another. It's quite an eye-opening time when we have these sort of in conjuncts in our lives that we start to see people for who they truly are. I look at them in a positive way because I feel without this sort of abrasive sort of energy going on, we may not necessarily get to see the truth about people. We may not really see them for who they truly are. We can sort of merrily go along with our head stuck in the stand and our feet in the air and saying, oh, I can't see anything. Everything looks great to me. So I think we need to sort of um, look at things like that in a way that we start to look at what's actually happening in the world around us. And we can't just take everything for granted. I know that, you know, we're all COVID tired and we're sort of a little bit sick of the pandemic and I'm sure it's still going to go on for a little while longer. But I want people to be very clear on the fact that there is, you know, we all have to be responsible for ourselves and our immediate family to keep them safe and try and find the best solution for us out of this COVID pandemic. And I know that there's a lot of arguments for vaccines and I know there's a lot of arguments against vaccines. Can I suggest this? Please don't start reading social media and you'll always find somebody to back up your theory. Please follow the medical advice from the scientists that has been researched that that's their life's work. They're not going to give you a bum steer and make your decision based on that. I keep going back to we beat polio with vaccines. We all wear seatbelts when we hop in a car. We don't jump up and down and say, that's taking away my civil liberties because I have to put a seatbelt on to keep me safe and hopefully protect me and save my life if I have a car crash. So let's put it into the same context of the COVID vaccine. So we're going to talk with Lisa now in Tampa in Florida. Are you there, Lisa? Yes. Do you have a question I can work with, please, Lisa? Yeah, um, I'm being um, harassed by two women uh, on social media, and I want to oh. know if you feel like it's going to get any better for me. Darling, that really makes me feel very, very uncomfortable because if these women are able to do this on social media and you're not able to sort of block them, prevent them or something like that, that would be my first suggestion. I'd just straight out block them, you know, so that they yeah, can't see any of your content. I've done that but already, but they're just they're yeah, going into different, like, chat rooms and slandering me and I've reported it, but I'm just wondering if it's going to die down soon or if they're just going to keep going. Now, look, I do think it will die down. I'd like to say it had died down and finished yesterday, but I still think that, you know, the wheels of motion to, to go through, you know, you sort of putting in a complaint and things like that are going to take a little bit of time. I don't understand why these women are so relentless. You know, as one area is shut down to them, they seem to find another area, another way of sort of slandering you or, you know, doing whatever. It's really interesting because I don't think they've got any, what I would call any leg to stand on as, as any sort of validity at why they're doing this, just that they're downright nasty. There's no other reason for it. You know, you haven't done anything wrong by them. It's just that they've done this and they're both feeding off each other. It's sort of the like the feeding frenzy, the excitement. You know, one's done this, so the other one tries to outdo the other one and goes one better to try and slander you. Look, I think it's still going to take another two weeks and then I think it'll all, right. all sort of die down all of a sudden. It's sort of like one minute it's a, it's like a feeding frenzy and the next minute it's gone. But it's just unfortunate. I mean, I think all that you can do is just keep trying to put out the spot fires as you become aware of them. You've done, in my yeah. opinion, nothing wrong to these women. It's just they've decided to put a set on you and there's not much you can do about it. Try not to get too upset about it. I know that's easier said than done. But the more you yeah. feed into their energy, the more that they're gaining out of this. You know, like I'd be certainly inclined to sort of write their names on a piece of paper and burn a candle and say, be gone, you know, like enough of this yeah. nonsense. 
and just do it yeah. in a very firm but very calm sort of way that you're sending it out to the universe that you want them to be gone out of your life completely. Don't say out of chat yeah. rooms or out of this or out of that. Let's just make it a very uniform, you want them gone completely out of your life now. You know, we want it that quickly and do it in a way that it's it's a more mature process than what they're doing. And I do believe in the universe accommodating our wishes when we're very firm, clear and concise about what needs to happen. And you're just asking them to be removed out of all areas of your life now and be yeah. that very firm, very blunt about it and just sit there and focus on the candle for about five minutes. Keep doing that every day for about five minutes, you know, stating the same sort of thing. It doesn't have to be the exact same words. It can be whatever comes into your mind today as you start to light the candle, but you need to voice it out loud, not just in your mind. Focus on the candle yeah, for five you, minutes, the candle out, you, and then that will help. You, there's one woman that has some criminal activity around her. Do you think that, you know, she'll uh, be getting in trouble for that? That's why she's threatening me. Look, I think they're both going to get into some sort of trouble out of this. Whether or not that's going to be a police matter or whether it's going to be something that just the social media company are going to handle in their way, I just know that it's all as you're going to know is one minute they're there and the next minute they're gone. And that's all you need okay. to know. Whatever happens to them after that, that's up to the authorities. But I do think this is, I don't think you're the first person they've attacked. And I think you'll probably be the last because you've taken. Well, I was this good friends with both of them. Than someone else. What, sweetie? Yeah, I was friends with both of them. And I had a falling out with one of them. Right. And that one went and shared everything I ever said about her to the other. And then. She, because mm-hmm. she was threatened because she thought I was going to call the police on her because she's got a lot of criminal activity around her that I know about. So mm-hmm. it was like a threat. But she, but I didn't do anything, but she just keeps going, and now she's just enjoying harassing me for no, really for no reason. I mean, it's so bizarre. You know? Yeah, but that's because some people have just got small minds, sweetie. You know, you're the flavour of the month or the flavour of the day. So, look, I just wouldn't take too much notice of that. I mean, okay, you've given her information in strict confidence. She shouldn't have broken your confidence. She has. You know, that's just people. I think the best thing you can do is not give them any oxygen as much as you can, Lisa. So I know that they will get into some sort of trouble. You need to just sort of try and take a firm stand and not allow them to upset your day. So unfortunately, Lisa, that's where we're going to need to leave it. We're going to talk with Ken now in Daytona Beach in Florida. Are you there, Ken? Oh, Gary, sorry. I can't read this morning without my glasses. How are you, Gary? Good. How are you? Good. I apologize for calling you, Ken. Do you have a question I can work with, please, Gary? Um, well, I recently lost somebody close to me, and I was wondering if maybe you could um, get in contact or get anything from him. Okay. I'm sorry that you lost someone close to you, Kerry. It's always a, a very difficult time, and, and it's sort of something that I don't think two, any two people in the world grieve the same way, so it's always a very personal thing. The first thing that he's sharing with me is that I'm not sure that they were ready to go. Was there something sort of unusual around this death? Because he's showing me that the ending, his ending, his passing came rather suddenly, like he wasn't ready for it. Yes. Yes, he was young. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, we can have somebody that's young, but if they were seriously ill, it's sort of like you sort of know it could happen. This to me was sort of like I got up one day and all of a sudden I was gone. Yeah, yeah, it was quick like that. Yeah, and he's still sort of... I, I, actually, I've, lo- I've lost three people that are fairly close to me, and so it sounds like you're, you're getting the, the one that didn't just recently pass, but the one before. Yeah, what's in- Look, I'm, I'm not sorry. saying he's thrilled the bits that he's gone. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm just saying he's still questioning how he didn't see it. You know, like it, it yeah. wasn't. It's like it hit, he got hit by a freight train. He didn't see it coming. So, look, that's exactly kind I of. Well, he was in an accident. So, 
Right, okay. Well, that's why he must have showed me it was like a freight train hit me and I didn't see it coming. Yeah, yeah. sometimes they give me yeah, symbols like that, train, you know, yeah. just because I can, I can relate to it. It's not necessarily how it is. But, yes, it was very sudden. Um, look, I, I know that there really isn't much there that he can tell me that he wants you to sort of go and share with anyone else other than the fact that he, he didn't see it coming. I don't think he, if he did cause it, he didn't deliberately cause it. It wasn't. You know, it wasn't an act of trying to take his own life or anything. It was just, it, it just happened in that split second. That's the best way I can describe it. So the other two people that you lost also, was there a question mark there around one of those as well? Um, well, there was, yeah, there was a one, there was two that died in a car accident and then there was one who was um, in the hospital. Why am I getting female energy around the one in the hospital? Um, can you say that again? I'm sorry, it cut out. <laughs> I, got, I got a real female energy around the one in the hospital, yet I didn't feel they were necessarily female. But they were showing oh, me sort of like female my, energy. It, it was my mom's husband. Right, right, okay. But Who was again, my I father sort of for this. most of my life. Yeah, but again, I still get question marks around it. It's like, yes, he was sick, but nobody expected this is the result. Yeah. Yeah, yeah kind so of didn't. I mean, we knew he was having issues for a lot of years, but, you know, he always recovered. Yeah, that's what I mean. We weren't expecting this result, even though he might have been sick on and off for years. You still weren't expecting this was the last time you were going to see him. He he seems to be more yeah. concerned about your mum and you, how you guys are handling it, more so than the fact that he's gone. It's like he's, he keeps showing me that mum's not right. So is that meaning she's that she's not, not coping with, with his loss or is it she's not well in herself or is it a combination of both? She's, that's where I'd like to she's go. Not, she, her health is fine but she's not dealing with this well at all she's like no. well, we thought she was going to be fine and she's she's really not fine at all oh well how can anybody think someone's going to be fine when you lose somebody that you you loved was your whole life in well, a sense we, i mean <laughs> we've experienced it a lot of you know really close people to us here recently and so we just didn't think that she was going to we react quite the way she is, you know. Like, of course, you never know how somebody is going to react, but she's, she's no. She's but he was sharing well. with me that he was concerned about your mother's physical health as well. Now, that could just be with the the loss and everything. She's not looking after herself as well as what she could be. Maybe not feeding herself, you know, adequate nutrition or something. He's a little bit concerned about her physical health as well as her emotional health. Yeah, yeah, he he would be. He, he definitely would be somebody that would worry about her health, and she she probably is not taking care of herself. And I mean, this is very very. No, recent. well, can you just, just pass has, that um, message? But, can you pass that message on to her from him that he wants her to start looking after herself? He's very upset yeah, about her not doing that. For sure. As much as he loves you, he's not ready for her yet. <laughs> that's hilarious because that's exactly what he would say. <laughs> yeah, mean, and that's exactly what he with, said to is, me. Is, yeah. is he with the yeah. other so person? Wants, the other person really wasn't sure they're sharing very much with me. They just had a smile on their face. So I'm taking from that that whatever or however you've looked at that passing, you know that they know that everything's okay. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, sweetie, that's where we've got to leave it, Kerry. We've only got a few seconds left of the show. So for this week, I want to leave you with the song that I think that we all need to look at occasionally, and that's Help. So there's a beautiful version out there by John Farnham. I know it was a Beatles song, but why don't you do yourself a favour and look up the version by John Farnham and Help. Until next week, bye for now. Bye.